All right. Well, hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us on this great uh, new webinar series. Uh, we're talking about circularity today, and we have two wonderful guests with us. That's why we call it Circularity is the Four Days Way, and you'll see why. Uh, a little bit about myself. I'm the co-founder of Green Story, and our vision as a company is to enable every consumer in the world to ask what's my impact before they make a purchase. We uh, work with companies uh, such as Four Days to calculate the impact of the wonderful items and showcase it to consumers so that they can make better, greener decisions. We also have a carbon offsetting system which allows you to make sure your impact is net zero by working with us. Uh, Without any further ado, I'd love to introduce our wonderful panel for today. So we have two speakers, both from Four Days, Christy Kaler, who's the founder and CEO, and uh, Mary Saunders, who's the founder and president uh, of the company. And they're going to be talking about this amazing uh, business and how it's evolving and how it's all connected to circularity. That being my short introduction, Christy, Mary, I'd love for you to introduce yourselves. Sure. Uh, thanks for having us today. This is um, a fun conversation. I think we have such a shared set of values in, in wanting to drive the industry forward. Um, so I am the co-founder and CEO of Four Days. I've actually been in the fashion industry for over 15 years and have really seen it um, from, from a few perspectives. One, I, I spent a number of years at The Gap um, launching and growing businesses there, which was an incredible experience, but saw really the impact that very large scale production had um, on people and the planet and felt like as a business and an industry as a whole, we were quite inefficient in the way that we produced product, sold product, marked, marked product down. And we just in general had way, way too much stuff floating around. Um, and then I was I was fortunate as I left Gap to co-found a company called Mayette, which operated in the uh, luxury space. And we worked with artisans in developing economies. And that was an incredible experience in learning how to kind of build supply chain in, in more unique ways and really drive economic empowerment to places that needed it most. But I saw kind of a similar construct or dynamic, even in the luxury space, we were, we were producing a ton of stuff that sold at Markdown or got returned back to us. And it just dawned on me that um, we needed a, a comprehensive solution and a new business model. And so very fortunately got kind of entrenched in circular economy conversations and sat on this fashion positive leadership team and, and really loved and just found a lot of merit in this idea of regenerative systems. If we're making all of this product, yes, let's make it with the minimal impact and footprint possible. But when it goes out into the world, we need to think about what happens at the end of its life. Um, it's not just a one-way linear street to uh, the landfill, which is kind of what we have today. And so um, as I was thinking about the customer evolution and thinking about really putting the customer in the driver's seat of, of this transformation, we realized that that owning things for forever is actually kind of a burden. And, and it means that clothing piles up in our homes and we need to get rid of it. And 85% of clothing um, ends up in landfill. And that's a big problem. And so we really set out to say, let's build a, a circular system, a regenerative system that incentivizes the customer to change their relationship to clothing, that really allows the, them to participate in a closed loop zero waste system. Um, and, and we as a company actually take responsibility for everything we put, back, put out into the world, we take it back, uh, recycle it, regenerate generate it and turn it back into clothing. So just by participating with that, um, we've really transformed what has been historic linear model into a truly circular model. So. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Great. Yeah, and um, <clears throat> kind of dovetailing on, on Christy's background. So I'm Mary Saunders, founder and president of our new business initiatives um, at For Days. And I also have been in the fashion industry for, for over 15 years. And in fact, Christy and I met back in the day at the Gap Brands. Um, and that's how we've kind of our uh, uh, our careers have, have dovetailed nicely um, uh, throughout the years. So as Christy was um, uh, starting Mayette, she also hired me out of business school um, to join at Mayette. Um, and then as she was conceptualizing and, and having the vision of what for days could be given her work in the circular economy um, was talking to me about it. And I was like, yes, this is possible. We can do this. And, and so um, wholeheartedly, you know, jumped into building for days with Christy um, because I always had the intention in fashion um, to learn as much as possible so I could make it better. 
um, just over the years as um, you know, we, we learned the, the negative um, environmental impact for fashion, um, you know, it really struck me that there has got to be a better way and, and that it's possible um, for, for us to build, build a better system. So uh, join Christy and her, and her vision of, of bringing circularity to the, to the fashion industry. And that brings me here today. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for those introductions. I'd like to dig into the vision part a little bit more because, you know, a vision to me is like how you kind of see what you're doing impact the world and how the world will look like after it. So so with four days, what's that vision look like? Yeah, it's a world where we can have everything and waste nothing. That's it at, at the highest level. Um, because, you know, fashion and, and product is fun. Like it's meant to be a personal expression. It's meant to be uplifting and positive. And so there's this, this kind of way that we believe the future could look where items just float in and out of our lives seamlessly as we need them. Um, but really within a system that doesn't generate waste in a system that kind of takes responsibility and regenerates. And so we see that, um, long-term big picture really applying to your whole lifestyle. I think, uh, you know, owning things is, is, is a big responsibility. And so if we can alleviate some of that and incentivize customers um, in a way that's good for them, good for the planet, it's just, we are all moving in the same direction. Fantastic. Uh, anything to add to that, Mary? Oh, um, I mean, I think for me, this vision of being able to impact such a such a large pollutive industry um, is what really draws me to the mission up for days, like that it, that it is actually possible. Um, and now is the time that that all brands can be putting putting the groundwork into place that makes it that fundamentally changes how people consume fashion and the impact that it has in landfill. Awesome. So let, let's talk about uh, circularity in in all of that because that that's how you're kind of achieving this this vision, right? And and circularity is like many things. It's not just about take back. It's about design. It's about getting a whole system in place. Can you tell me a little bit more about your experience with that? Uh, you know what circularity means for your brand and how you went about like creating this model because it you were quite pioneering in that respect as well. Yeah, circularity is a word that's often used, I would say, um, not, I don't wanna say inaccurately, but not completely and not comprehensively in the way it should be. And circularity is truly this idea of um, retaining value of inputs in perpetuity. So really not seeing anything degrade or waste over time. But that is the idea of regeneration that you can retain maximum value. In order to do that, you have to think of the end at the beginning. So you have to know that you're going to take this back at some point, what condition is that going to be in? How are you going to actually regenerate it in perpetuity? So that does start with design. Uh, it starts with material choices. It starts with measuring as, as we do with you, even just resource usage. How are we handling water in our dye process? Are the dye stuff safe for the environment? So that at the end of life, when the product comes back to us, we know we're not being further pollutive. Um, I think we talk a lot about reuse, which is very important and a lot of, about just reducing material inputs, but it is really what happens at the very end that I think is the hardest kind of nut to crack because everything has an end. <laughs> and if we can't reabsorb it and do something positive with it, we actually haven't achieved circularity. So um, that for us was kind of starting at the end was the most important part. Um, and then also knowing that this is a behavioral shift. So, you know, it's it's all well and good to make a product that could be recycled, but how do you get it back? Um, where does it go? How are you tracing it? How are you getting the customer engaged in this behavior in a way that's really easy and simple and rewarding? Um, and that was more of the process piece. That was more of the designing of the kind of engagement with the customer. So spending a, a lot of time on supply chain and materials developments, spending a lot of time on understanding end of life, reclamation, recycling, um, and then in the middle, really engaging the customer in this so that they're they're activated so that we know we're gonna get it back. Um, because you know you can design the best products in the world, but if they end up in landfill, that's not circularity. So. So, so the customer like behavior piece has been like, you know, kind of the hardest thing 
that, yes. that exists in fashion, I guess, to kind of uh, <laughs> uh, track and crack. So there are two aspects to this. One is the participation in the circular economy. And second is like getting them aware and, you know, getting them to kind of use things properly, wash properly, and also wear it out as much as possible instead yes. of, you know, having a use and throw mindset. Uh, how have you tackled that? Yeah, I think with our system, what's kind of interesting about, um, what this idea of being able to swap something or that your product actually is valuable at the end of life, no matter how long you've owned it or what condition it comes back to us in, because we know we can recycle it. So it's great. Wear it out, stain it, rip it, stretch it. We encourage you to live in your clothing. Um, and so unlike the resale markets that are asking for gently used clothes or preferably clothes with tags on them, we're actually saying, no, these are clothes that we want you to experience life in. Like, Literally, we don't care if it comes back filthy, even better. We've had things come back to us with like drawings on them or cut up and we're like, great, make them your own. And I think because of that relationship, we're inspiring and kind of encouraging utilization. There's like this insurance policy that no matter what happens, we'll take your pit stain t-shirt back. We don't care. <laughs> <laughs> that single sock, we got gotcha. um, you. Know, so it's just, um, I think that that piece is different and 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 we've heard feedback from customers that that's what gives them comfort and kind of draws them to what we're doing and there's this like very nice affinity to that um, relationship that's awesome and this also kind of uh, nicely goes into the new portion of your business that you're doing as well uh, Mary in your case this it might be more your topic where you're trying to extend this model to other brands from what I understand and encouraging them to that, how, how have you seen the reaction in the market uh, to, to that so far? And can you explain a little bit more about that? Oh, you're on mute, Mary. Uh, Sorry, I have, a, I have a crying baby in the background. So just making sure I was on mute. Um, so uh, yeah, so for us, the goal, I think coming from the fashion industry has always, always been to, to change the industry. And so we, we found that, um, that brands were coming to us asking, okay, how can we incorporate circularity into our brands? We had done a lot of work um, figuring out, as you talked about, our mechanisms that work, building the technology to support the customer experience, building, building the um, reverse logistics and supply chain to support recycling. And so we have actually a lot to offer brands as far as um, how can they participate in circularity. And so what we've been doing over the past little while is figuring out, okay, what's a very easy way that brands can, can um, adopt, begin to adopt circularity and how can we make it really easy for them? And so what we've found in our business is our take back bag is, is our number one selling SKU um, on our site by unit volume. And this is, this is a take back, this is a bag where customers buy it from us um, and receive a credit for future purchase. They get to fill up the bag with any old crap that you know they want to get rid of out of their closet, you know, clean it out, cleanse, send it back to us and we make sure everything is um, recycled. And so it's been, been hugely powerful for us from a customer perspective, one, because of the service element, people really want this and, and you see that in the volume. And then secondly, because of the affinity that it brings um, to your brand. So we, we see these customers, you know, spend 75% more with us over the year um, because of their participation in our, in our circular system. And, and so um, we were saying, this is actually something that we can, we can with a little bit of technology building um, actually be able to easily offer to other brand partners so they, they can become circular as well. Fantastic. And, and that's some, that's an offering that you have right now for all brands. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. So if anyone's yep. interesting, we're just, just yeah. I'll uh, put my my email in the chat um, if anyone uh, wants to reach out to me directly about that. Fantastic. So, yeah, so I, was, I was just going to add something to what Mary said because I think it's um, it you know that that statistic that it's our number one selling item every week is something I have to say we were kind of surprised by and yet not surprised by. Um, and I'll I'll tell you why we've done a lot of focus groups and conversations with people and and we're like you know. I ask this question every time I walk into a room and it doesn't matter who the audience is. And I say, who here has too much stuff? And everybody raises their hand. Yeah. Every single person, age, demo, doesn't matter. 
And what you realize is this linear model that we have is predicated on selling us more and more and more and more in one direction. And so this, this bag as a service, as Mary said, is kind of alleviating that, that burden from the customer. And so that affinity piece is really good. But as we were like thinking this is something people need, we realized how hard it is to actually take all that stuff back. <laughs> and do the right thing with it. And so, um, you know, it's, it's great that we can service our audience, but I think in building that out and scaling that capacity, we were like, wouldn't it be great to service more people and really start to make this a way of life um, more broadly. And so I think that's the inspiring part of being able to partner with people is to really grow this behavior um, because I think the impact that it will have uh, just from a, you know, literal environmental impact and diverting all of that from landfill is so significant, but it also has this really great positive business impact. So yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Uh, I can also imagine this is a bit of a reverse logistics nightmare. So can you explain to me how, how you're kind of managing, what are the systems that you build? Cause you're not only really dealing with like recovering items, you then have like a mix of completely blended items, like, you know, like recycle polyester, cotton, breaking all of that apart. So tell me a little bit about how you're handling all of that. What are the systems that you put in place so you can have better separation? And what is the ecosystem for that? Like what are the partnerships that you have in place around that? Yeah, so it really starts um, with the traceability at the customer level. And so knowing the bag is coming back and from who, uh, we do that with a serialized ID Kind of process that we're rolling out more broadly so that we know okay this is where it came from it's back at our facility we then take all the contents of that and we sort and grade them and we do it slightly differently because we're not just trying to pluck out the cream and you know sell it at maximum value um, we really are trying to optimize for recyclability so we look at quality um, we do pull out things that we think could have a second life um, it's surprisingly not that many because i think our call to action is really you know the stuff you don't know what to do with will take. Um, the things that end up in landfill will take. And so then we do a high, mid, low grade on it um, and then start to figure out what the material base is. And so that will dictate where it can go from a recycling perspective. Right now, most of that's very manual. Um, working on some automation. So we're actually building out a new facility over the course of the next three months that will have some really cool kind of like systems automation in it uh, to make that faster and easier. Um, and then we work with recycling partners and those can be uh, either fiber to fiber recyclers, which we have to be very specific about the materials that go into that work stream, or they can be kind of what we would call down cyclers. So people who do rags, shoddy, insulation, um, service kind of larger industries, um, and they can take a larger mix of things. They're not as specific on the content itself. Fantastic. Um, like in, in terms of uh, the, uh, I, I guess the, the broader uh, network that you're build, building around it, there must be a lot of stakeholders involved. Can you tell me a little bit more about this as you're introducing the, the new platforms? Uh, what has uh, been some of the, I guess, challenges you might have encountered in getting the right stakeholders on board uh, with the, with the entire system? Yeah, I mean, I think it's stakeholders and it's also um, on the stakeholder side, that's kind of the network we've been building from the four days perspective. And I think being an early innovator in circularity, um, we've been having those conversations longer than most. And so I think in that sense, you know, we can really partner with people and, and kind of figure out what their needs are like, such a random interesting thing that we've learned recently, but like feedstock for recycled products is actually at an all time low. And so there are people looking for that, but they need it in a certain way or they need it, you know, of a certain color or, and so we can kind of partner with those more supply chain partners to really um, optimize <clears throat> for the best output. I think, um, you know, when you say stakeholders, really, I'm going to say our customer is like the biggest stakeholder, like, really and truly, this is about making like their lives better and easier. And without their participation and that community kind of driven participation, this doesn't work. So that's the number one stakeholder in our book. Um, and, and I think it's, it's a really nice kind of fulfilling thing to make sure you're just staying very customer centric in all of this. But then, you know, I think in, in rolling this out through partnership, the goal really is to drive a more profitable and efficient ecosystem 
for the industry, as Mary said. And so if we're starting to see those shifts in business economics as a result of this offering, um, you know, that that's just really powerful and that that will help partner brands in a very significant way. And are you kind of helping them with the communication piece as well? Because at this point, for example, you you know how to communicate with your customers mm -hmm. on circularity, right? Like, like I've seen you use all sorts of innovative ways. You were also one of the early adopters of Green Story there. So you're kind mm -hmm. of telling the story in a very credible way and you're engaging with your customers correctly. Uh, how's that playing across for your some of the brand partners that you're working with? Are, are you helping them in crafting that narrative as well? Yeah, yes, absolutely. I think um, that is one thing, having, having done this for longer than most, is figuring out what resonates, how to educate the customer, how to walk them through the process. Um, and then also the level of, of traceability. I mean, knowing the impact that we're having and communicating that back to the brand partners and saying, this is how much we've collected. This is the, the measured impact of diverting that from landfill um, and helping with that kind of piece of it as well. Um, so it's kind of customer communication process and then even sustainability communication. And when it comes to like, I, I guess, like broadening the stakeholder uh, like uh, piece here, because uh, I've in a lot of places, the governments are really involved in this stuff. Like, you know, municipal waste landfills are, are a huge problem. Have you seen any kind of support or maybe even pushback from local governments on this? Or no, you know, there are interesting things happening. I think they're happening slowly and in, in little pockets around policy change or. Um, Kind of a call for the industry to take responsibility for end of life of product. I think it's early days, but I think it is happening. It's in conversations. It's in small, small, small conversations today, but with some pretty powerful um, people and influence. So I, I'm optimistic it'll move. I think we're all aiming for the same thing at the end of the day. Um, I think the question has always been, how do we get there? Who's going to do it? Um, it's just not, it doesn't exist yet. And so, you know, that's that's really for us, our opportunity, we're building it. Let's go do it. <laughs> and what's interesting for me also, like, you know, yeah, I think we talked about this uh, a bit earlier as well, was this uh, community that's out there, uh, especially on like social media of like uh, people who are creative with upcycling and mm -hmm. uh, that kind of uh, this micro influencer, I, I guess I wouldn't even call them micro influencers, some of them with millions of people following them. Uh, <laughs> Have you, have you engaged with that group? Because I can see how, you know, what you're doing kind of connects with that. It's such a great question. Yes, we love that group of people. There's, it, our customer's young. Like our customer's probably like core is 18 to 28. And so they're they're very engaged in this topic. And as a result, there are also just so many wonderful creators who are upcycling and taking old materials or applying art to an old garment or re-engineering something for a new purpose. And so we actually every month do a creators partnership um, with somebody from our community and offer something totally unique. Like we just did a natural dyed bucket hat uh, this month. We had this amazing artist take our jumpsuit and do a hand drawing all over it. And so it was all one of a kind pieces. And we've had an artist take our, our old t-shirts and make a big, beautiful mural out of it. And so um, I think that that component of this is, you know, my creative side gets really happy and excited about it. So we love it. And, and, and again, it's about our community and giving them voices and giving them a platform, but um, there's so much creativity out there. So. That's awesome. Uh, so what, what, one thing I like about your model is it, it is, you know, unique in the sense that you're, you're combining the linear model with take back. It's kind of like, almost putting secondhand rental everything into one, one spot with, with what you're doing. Uh, so have you got any feedback from your consumers on that? Like when they, have they started thinking about clothing and how they utilize their wardrobe differently after, uh, you know, being your customer? Yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's implicit in the behavior that you think about it differently. I think because, so, we obviously have a, a camp and a customer who thinks about this already, who's very educated, who comes to us going, thank God I found a solution, like ask us the hard questions, which are great. 
And, and those are kind of, I would say, you know, early adopters, very, very leading edge in the sustainability movement. But we also have this big group of customers who are like sustainability curious <laughs> um, in a sense, or they know they want to do better. They're not really sure, you know, what that means or how, but there's also this need um, for less stuff in your house and a need for fresh clothing and a need. And, and I, I, this is a total anecdote, but we worked with, um, a woman on some technology stuff and she comes more from a product, you know, technology product background. And we worked with her on the whole system. And uh, months later, she wrote me this note and she said, you know, I went to buy white t-shirts from the place that I normally buy them. And I was like, what am I doing? I should just buy them for four days. And she's like, and then it hit me how great this is. I never need to go and buy another t-shirt full price again, because you guys have me covered. And I was like, exactly. And so it was like this aha moment where it was like, oh, there's value in this. I'm doing the right thing. You're going to be with me for the long haul. Like this is a great system. So that's what I would, I would say the other camp um, of customers who are discovering it, how they're responding. That's, that's such an awesome story. I absolutely love that. It's really great to hear these real life reactions of people and having this one moment where you kind of see it, see the, I guess, penny drop in a sense. And you're like, yes. yes. Yeah, exactly. We're like, oh, it's more of those, right? <laughs> Amazing. Uh, so, I mean, your, your model has been pretty inspirational. It's, it's, uh, I've seen you men being mentioned on media. A lot of our other customers have also asked about it. So what is some advice that you would give to brands who are thinking about closing the, the loop and uh, uh, how they kind of go about it? Uh, so... The advice is multi-pronged. One, um, it's important to embark on this journey. I think starting with product is essential, making sure you're, you're understanding your, your supply chain and, and your material choices. Um, and then really listening to your customer around kind of their behavioral preferences. I would say the hardest part is, is building both the customer experience and the infrastructure. Um, so not to be too forward about it, but come partner with us and we'll help you get there. <laughs> um, just meaning like those components of the process are really, really more difficult. So don't be discouraged. They're not obvious. There's no blueprint. Um, I think having a conversation with your customer, saying you're committing to it, starting with products that you know can be reclaimed and recycled is step one, because if you don't do that, the whole system doesn't work anyway. Um, so I think that's, that's step one. And then learn like really research and learn and attend talks and read, read information. Mary and I are constantly educating ourselves, like whether it's on like nuance of new packaging material and what that means for compostability versus recyclability and gases. It really, you know, it's like, you're always going to be in a, in a zone of learning. Um, so just stay curious and keep learning. Amazing. Awesome. So, uh, Final note, a note, I guess, is uh, what's the advice that you'd give to consumers then uh, on the same thing? Yeah, it, it's um, it's not dissimilar in the sense like learn the brands you're purchasing from. Just dig in it a little bit and be thoughtful about it. Um, I think be thoughtful about purchases. Seek out alternatives for end of life so that you can find a solution because I think, you know, the, the trash is the worst place for it, but also donations can be really pollutive. Um, you know, we use that a little bit like a trash receptacle, which is not cool. And so it's, it takes a little extra effort, but it's usually on the educational components, like just finding good resources and good channels and good outlets. Um, because I think that that activating that end of life is really critical. Fantastic. Uh, awesome. So we have a few questions that have come in from the audience. I'd like to just go, go through the two question clusters, I'd say. Uh, the first one is, how do you capture your impact on the transformation of the industry? So I guess this is talking about in a broader sense, how are you looking at, like, from what four days is doing, how is it affected the industry? And how do you kind of see it affecting the industry in a sense, too? Yeah, I mean, we obviously work with you guys. So we are conscious of traceability, particularly on the product side and the supply chain side. So obviously just in our own world and what we can control, we measure that. Um, really the landfill diversion is is 
where it's all housed and what impact that has. Um, and then as you break it down, you can start to, to measure what recycling takes energy wise, what that produces, what savings that makes. So you can get quite granular in it. But I think that the highest level, the statistics are, yes, what are we taking out of the landfill waste stream? And again, because this take back bag really is a, like, give us your crap. We feel strongly those are the things that will end up in landfill because they have no home. They're not resellable. They're not, you know, going to appear on brought up anytime soon for a high value. So I think um, that's how we measure it, just at the highest highest level. And I think it's it's very tangible, and we get tons of it. I mean, it's remarkable even in our own you know small startup environment. Like the quantity of product that comes to us is really astounding. So wow. we're hoping that will grow exponentially, so we can keep measuring it. I guess that also kind of answers uh, on your stats on the environmental impact. You're mm -hmm. you're doing the measurement, of course, with Green Story, mm -hmm. and also you're looking at other statistics from what I know. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the third question is a bit more interesting, though. I, I, are you doing it? Uh, is there any information that you're gathering on the communities that you're involved in, especially in the production process? Oh, that's a, that's an interesting question. Yeah, I mean, I think um, on the production process component of it, we are we ask our factories to be very transparent on their labor practices, their wage practices. Like we'll do um, an audit on wage versus minimum wage, wage versus living wage, um, just to ensure everybody is operating with the highest level of ethical compliance. Um, I think the supply chain on the production side is a, is a more standard process. You know, it's not like we're, leveraging community-led production at scale. Um, that being said, <laughs> so I, I think there's actually a really interesting opportunity that we're starting to explore, which is the impact that these products that we take back could have on community or have on in a philanthropic way or have on industry. And so really more how the end of life is impacting um, community. And, and that's kind of a, a very broad comments because we haven't really figured out how we're going to measure that yet but there's you know there's there's a lot of work being done there so awesome uh, a couple more questions but this time around marketing so how has marketing played into circularity or enabling it i suppose from your side um it's been it's i mean it's marketing's essential <laughs> it's really important um yeah, there's always an educational component. You know, I think two years ago when I said, oh, we're building a zero waste closed loop circular fashion company, like we never use all those words together. People are like, I have no idea what you're talking about. Like, <laughs> none of those words make sense to me. And uh, now I think kind of a little bit accelerated by COVID and people questioning their values. And I just think the, the more common preference for sustainable products it's become an easier educational process um, because you know people are starting to understand these terms or they're curious about the terms so they want to learn more. I think individualizing it and personalizing it is something that's also really, really important. Like what does this do for you as a customer? How do we make it easy for you? What are the savings you will actually generate just in producing this? Which, which is why the individual product stats are so interesting. It's why we measure take back bags. Like, and serve that to the customer in an individual snapshot. Um, because we can market from kind of the top down on how important this is for the world. At the end of the day, the most powerful thing is to talk to it one-on-one. -on -one. How is this powerful for you as a customer? Mm -hmm. that's, that's the best approach. That so bringing done. it down to the level of their choice, at this point yeah. that they're choosing to participate with four days, what does that actually mean for them? Yes. Fantastic. Uh, and in terms of the follow-up is actually on storytelling, which you've already talked about, but that actually leads me to ask, like in terms of platforms that you're on, like where, where have you found your customers and where have you found your most engaged customers as well? Yeah, a lot of our customers come to us organically. So um, I do think the storytelling we do more in like the public space around press or giving talks or, you know, just being kind of a thought leader on circularity is very important. Um, I think word of mouth has been very powerful for us because I think the, the passion behind the people who've chosen to purchase from us is pretty evident. 
Um, but we do use typical marketing platforms. Like we're, we're really building community on Instagram. We're using Facebook tools. We're currently building out Google tools. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a mix of that, but I think focusing really on our organic community is, is the place where we like to invest the most time and effort. Fantastic. And is that the same case for the new business, uh, Mary? Like when you're reaching out to other business who want to participate with you, where are you finding this this community of like-minded businesses? Yeah, I mean, I think the wonderful thing that um, both Christy and I have seen from the beginning of our careers in the fashion industry is just how much the customer has evolved and how much the customer is now demanding this of their brands demanding of sustainability and now going to be demanding circularity. And so I think having been involved in the industry and, and having relationships with other brands, like brands are are coming to us looking for these solutions um, and, and wondering how they can incorporate circularity in. And so, um, you know, it's been very organic that, that this has come about. And, um, and I think that any brand that is interested in bringing more sustainability to their company um, will be interested in the in this as an offering. Fantastic. Uh, which actually brings brings me to this, uh, this interesting question from Cassie, and it's around the other brands. Uh, yeah. So resale, especially you know you you see companies like ThreadUp, for example, which are partnering a lot with other companies means in similar take back programs. So it's, it's not take back as much as a resale program that they're doing for end of life. So do you see like resale platforms as a competitor or is, is it part of the broader ecosystem and more of a collaborator in, in what you're doing? Yeah, I mean, I, I view resale as a, as a component of the equation that is critical. Um, but if it's just a pit stop on the way to the grave, we haven't solved the problem. Mm -hmm. So if it's encouraging light utilization and quick turns, you know, one could argue that's not great. <laughs> that being said, I do think resell and reuse has an important role to play in the bigger circularity conversation. So in that sense, collaborators um, carefully. And I think uh, we're thinking through that now, like what is our strategy on, on resale and how do we encourage circularity even within that environment and how are we partnering with people who are encouraging utilization and and really also empowering community to participate? So, um, still something we're we're kind of working through, but I do think resell is is important. It's just not the end all. Absolutely, and it's funny because uh, you know ThreadUp is also a client partner of ours, so it'll be great to kind of have you guys in a room and discuss this because yeah. the consumer uh, like. Uh, behavior aspect is really core to all of this, right? Like when you buy secondhand, you treat, treat it as a use and throw. And then when you throw it, does do you make sure it's recycled, right? Yeah. Uh, that's awesome. Um, final question is from Jocelyn and she's asking with the rise of more consumers demanding supply chain transparency, are you going to be moving forward with giving more details around your factories and production? Like, you know, when, when you say that a lot of it is standardized, course and it seems to be kind of part for the course that you have to tell who made your clothes uh, is, is that is that, uh, is that uh, something that's in your plans moving forward yes absolutely um i think the transparency element is absolutely critical and i think we do that by showing and so we're working through actually a video strategy right now so you could actually see how it's made because i think to your point like we talk about it and say this is how it's done or these are the standards or this is what we adhere to but i think seeing it and really connecting with it that way um, is something we're, we're going to lean into actually in the next few months and, and start to present on the site in a clearer way. Fantastic. Well, mm -hmm. that's all the questions for me, Mary and Christy. Do you have anything to add just as final thoughts? Uh, my final thought is, is actually this, which is if we think about it as an industry and we think about um, circularity as a very big opportunity for driving better business results. Like that's as an industry, the lens through which we should do all of this work um, because that's what really will inspire transformation. And so that's for us core. Um, you know, how are we shifting the economics of the industry in a positive way alongside eliminating clothing waste? Mm -hmm. And yeah. so that um, for us is our everyday focus. 
I wholeheartedly, that's a great note to, to end on. That's, I feel exactly the same way. <laughs> well, that, that's awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time. And uh, I, I absolutely love what you guys are doing. It's, it's such a privilege to work with the, both of you. And more, more importantly, I think that the, what you're, what you're doing right now with like providing this new service to brands is, is really awesome. I'm all, we're all for collaboration here at Green Story, and it's great to see, you know, forward thinking brands like you take that into account with your new offering. So if any brands out there listening, do reach out to Mary and it's Mary at four days .com. And yep. uh, yeah, uh, thank you so much for joining us. Yep. yep. Thank, thank you for having you. us. Very much, Ben. Great questions. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.